Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Module number 4, Ecosystem Dynamics. In this first video, we're going to just review some of the things that we talked about in terms of the abiotic factors in our previous topic in biological diversity, just to give you a bit of a refresh on where we're going to be going in this final module. So the learning intention for this particular video is to be able to investigate and determine relationships between biotic and abiotic factors in an ecosystem, including the impact of abiotic factors. So our focus here is to make sure that we are looking at the abiotic factors that determine the key features of the ecosystem. What we're going to have a look at is some different levels of success that you can identify out of each of these different videos. At a very basic level, you really must be able to recall the different abiotic factors which can affect living organisms. So that'll be a little list that you can rattle off. Hopefully you might also be able to describe how a particular abiotic factor um, impacts in a particular ecosystem. It may well be that you know more than one, but at least if you can describe how an important abiotic factor can impact on an ecosystem. And at a higher level, if you can evaluate the relative importance of different abiotic factors within an ecosystem, then you're really starting to get to grips with why abiotic factors are so important when we're talking about living systems. So let's review them. The most important thing that we need to look at are some of these abiotic factors which are determinants of the ecosystem itself. So these factors can impact on exactly what type of ecosystem that we have. Abiotic factors are the non-biological components of the ecosystem. So they include physical and chemical features of each of the ecosystems. So that's going to be important in terms of temperature and temperature is important both in terms of daily and seasonal. And in fact, when we're looking at some of these factors, some of these can change quite significantly over the course of the year, certainly a lot more than they do within a single day. Humidity is important, which is the proportion of water vapour in the atmosphere. Sunlight's important. And there are also different levels of sunlight that can occur, for example, in a rainforest system where there's a huge amount of light that light may not reach uh, certain levels within the rainforest because other plants have already taken advantage of that and virtually created a, a complete cover uh, over some of the plants underneath. Rainfall is very important, both how much and when it falls. Aspect is in terms of which direction that your ecosystem is facing. This is particularly important when you're looking at coastal ecosystems or mountainous ecosystems where it may be that there are consequences of, say, facing north as opposed to facing east or west. And of course, that kicks into something like topography. One of the things that's very important to remember is that the abiotic factors are not always evenly distributed through the ecosystem. And I use the example of sunlight in a rainforest um, to identify that there might be a huge amount of light falling onto a particular ecosystem, but not all of that light may be actually reaching all of the living organisms equally. So here's a, a picture from your textbook. It is looking at a marine environment. And when we look at this marine environment, we can identify some important abiotic factors that actually affect the distribution and abundance of different living organisms. So probably one of the most important things that you notice straight away is the fact that light is differentially absorbed at depth. That is, not all of the light that reaches the surface reaches into the depths of the ocean. And in fact, the fact that certain, certain, light, uh, certain wavelengths of light are filtered out earlier than others does contribute to the, both the color of the oceans that we see and also the fact that certain types of plants can only grow to certain depths. Beyond that, the light is just insufficient for them to grow. Now, some of the consequences, I guess, associated with that are some of the different types of adaptations that we see for different organisms to survive either in low or zero light. Uh, and also one of the things that's important about marine environments is the availability of things like uh, nutrients or salts. If it's an environment where there is a very high salt level, then um, those particular 
organisms that live there are going to have to be able to deal with those salt levels. If we're talking about an aquatic system which is a non-marine, which maybe is a freshwater system, where we're talking about very low levels of salts, that's a different type of problem. And of course, there are uh, types of aquatic environments where we've got intertidal mangrove kind of situation where the there is a mix of uh, salty water and fresh water, which is changing the salinity levels uh, on a daily basis, often with the tides. So uh, each of these are important abiotic components. And when we're looking through each of these, we're trying to get a feel for uh, are there certain gases that are present? Oxygen, obviously, is very important. Carbon dioxide is very important. To what level are they uh, absorbed into the, the water or available in the air? Uh, what's the light like? What's the range of temperatures like? Do the temperatures fall very low? Is the range fairly consistent throughout the year? Uh, all of these are components of the abiotic uh, part of the ecosystem that we need to have a look at. As we go through this particular module, I'm going to share some important ecological principles with you because if we're going to study ecosystem dynamics, then we need to understand some of the ways that um, uh, ecology is done. And one of the first uh, principles that I want to have a look at, this is not the most fundamental principle in ecology, but it's certainly the first one that we're going to look at, uh, is that in terrestrial environments, net primary production, so net primary production, you often see this abbreviated as NPP, NPP, net primary production, which is basically how much material is tied up in the plants, um, which is the first of the trophic levels. It's the start of all of the food chains, and it's really one of the definers of our ecosystems. And in terrestrial environments, it's generally limited by temperature and water supply. So these are the two key factors that uh, contribute to the amount of plant material that there is. And obviously temperature is going to be linked to light and we, we can have a discussion about photosynthesis and the importance of light. Um, but also water is one of those key uh, elements, uh, key compounds, uh, an element in terms of one of the things that is required for photosynthesis. And so therefore we need to make sure that the water supplies are sufficient for plants to carry out that process of photosynthesis. In aquatic environments, water is not so much of a problem and net primary production is really more likely to be limited by nutrient supply. So what nutrients are available for plants to grow? As we go through the um, next few weeks of this module, we're going to be looking at some Australian ecosystems in a little bit more detail. I've just given you a little bit of a shopping list here of some of the different types of ecosystems. But one of the things that you can do is to start to think about those key abiotic factors that are going to affect these. And there's a combination of terrestrial and aquatic environments here, ones where temperature is going to be important, where rainfall is going to be important, or ones where the availability of nutrients is going to be more important, or perhaps the mixing of salt levels that are changing throughout the day. Uh, this is the sort of thing that we're going to be studying uh, through this uh, last module of ecosystem dynamics. And so it's important that we contextualise a lot of the work we're doing within one of these, one or more of these key Australian ecosystems. Thanks for watching.